Hey everybody, it's Ranger Russ back at the Meg's Point Nature Center. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today, so we'll see how it goes. Um, again, I really appreciate all the feedback. Keep on sending comments and make sure that you mention where you're from with your questions. It's nice to see how far this program is reaching. I want to remind everybody that the Meg's Point Nature Center is closed, but Connecticut State Parks are open, so get out there Enjoy your parks, um, keep your social distance. Fishing season is open. So I always ask for those thumbs up for people that enjoy fishing. Get out there, do some fishing, uh, see how much you enjoy it. I have some great news. Saturday, we did a program at a place called Hope and we visited an owlette, a baby great horned owl. A couple of days ago, that owl was put back up in the nest, and we now have, they have some camera footage of the parent taking care of the baby. So, baby owl back in the nest, being cared for. It's exactly what A Place Called Hope is all about. They just want to get the animals back into the wild as safely and as soon as possible. So, great news, our baby owl is back up in the nest. Okay, so today I have a little thing we're going to do. Uh, you're all going to have to participate with me. So everybody stand up. We're going to do a little rhyme that's going to remind everybody how our, or what to follow for our safety uh, rules. Okay, so I will do it once and then you can all do it with me. Okay, so first of all, listen to my warning true. Pump into your elbow. Wash your hands. Use warm water. Two minutes, please. Keep back. Six feet back. Don't touch your face. Okay? I'm getting tangled in my wire here. All right. Everybody do that with me. Listen to my warning, too. Cough into your elbow. Wash your hands. Use more warm water. Two minutes, please. Keep back, six feet back, don't touch your face. I forgot my line there for a second. Don't touch your faces at the end. So, this is just something I made up this morning. Uh, I would appreciate it if you all could help me out because I'm not really good at this sort of thing. Um, if you could write up your own little rhyme, make it into a song, you can record it, send it to us, just send us a, um, a picture of your words, your lyrics, however you want to do it. I would really appreciate it. I think it would be really fun to see what you guys can come up with. Again, I'm not a, a songwriter. This is way outside of my comfort zone. So let's see what you can come up with uh, to remind everybody all of those things that we have to keep for safety. All right, let's get into our animal. Today we are talking about a really amazing animal, and it's a snake, okay? So if you remember, snakes are reptiles. We've talked about ectothermic, which snakes are. We've talked about the fact that they have scales, okay, which snakes do. Reptiles have scales. We talked a little bit about laying eggs, which most reptiles lay eggs, okay? However, this snake is a little bit different. Remember, there are exceptions to every rule in nature. And this is one of those exceptions. This is a reptile that doesn't lay eggs. It keeps the eggs inside of it. And the eggs hatch at the same time that they're being laid. So they come out at the same time that the eggs are hatching. So the mother actually keeps the eggs inside her. This term is called ovoviviparous. And this is definitely going to be on your vocabulary list that's next to our videos. So ovoviviparous, it's a very big word, but it means keeping the eggs inside of them. Now, northern water snakes, we're going to pick this one up. A lot of people are really scared of northern water snakes because they think it's a venomous snake. It looks similar to the water moccasin, which is a southern snake which we don't have here in Connecticut. It has a similar pattern to it, 
Um, this one is getting, you can see the pattern, but this snake is pretty dark because it's getting ready to shed its skin. Okay. Now, another thing, people think that they're, they're scary because of the shape of its head. Usually venomous snakes have a, a diamond or triangular shaped head. This snake has a little bit of that diamond shaped head. Also, water snakes tend to be a bit aggressive. If you're in or around the water where they live, uh, and you get too close and scare them, they might bite you. Sometimes people tell me that, that they were swimming in a pond and this snake swam over and it chased them all the way out of the pond. So what this snake was doing probably is looking for food. These snakes eat fish and frogs and they find them by the movement of the fish or the frog. So if you're swimming around, you're making splashes, you're sending ripples across the pond. And the snake is coming to investigate, maybe there's a fish that's injured or wounded that it can catch and get an easy meal. So it swims up and it gets closer and closer to you. And what do you do? Are you gonna stand there? No, you're gonna swim away as fast as you can. And the snake is following those ripples, thinking, oh, there might be a meal ahead of me. As soon as it gets close enough, it's going to realize that you are way too big to eat. There aren't any snakes in Connecticut that could eat a person, and they have no interest in trying to eat you. So as soon as it gets close enough, if you're brave enough just to stand there, the snake will come up, swim right up to you, probably swim around you. I've had them circle right around me a few times because they, they really thought there was a fish or something there. They realize there's nothing there that's for them to eat, and then they swim off. Um, they do eat frogs also, and I find many times along a, a pond, I see these with the frogs sticking out of their mouths as they're eating the frogs. Sometimes we even find them uh, trying to eat a fish. Okay, now look at the belly. You see all those bright colors? It's really awesome that they have this beautiful color. Normally, again, there'd be more of a pattern on the back, but again, this snake's getting ready to shed. We're gonna look at the other water snake that I have. We have two. This one actually was born here at the Nature Center, or hatched here at the Nature Center. And it, we kept it because it's different color. This snake is all black. It doesn't have that pattern at all. Its belly is just gray, almost white. Now this snake is getting ready to shed and it's closer to being, able, being ready to shed than that last snake that we just looked at. If you look at this snake's eye, it's completely clouded over. The snake can't see very well. So when a snake is getting ready to shed, they secrete a fluid between their two layers of skin. Between the old skin and the new skin, they secrete this fluid and it helps to separate that skin. So that's what's happening here. It, the fluid is sort of milky in color, so the snake has turned a little milky in color. And that's why the eyes, snakes don't have eyelids, they can't blink. So the skin that covers the eye, that fluid gets in between there and it makes it harder for the snake to see. Now, after that fluid has separated the skin really well, the snake is going to absorb the fluid back into its body and then it's ready to shed. Then it will begin to rub against something that whole process could take a week. Some with bigger snakes, it could take longer. Smaller snakes, it's a little bit faster. But when they shed, they shed all the skin. From the tip of their nose, this is the, the head of the snake shed, okay? And you can see these are the eye circles because they don't have eyelids. The shed needs to, the skin that covers the eye needs to shed as well. From the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail in one piece. Typically, when you find a snake shed, it's going to be a little bit longer than the snake that shed it. So this snake, this snake was probably only about this long, okay? So closer to, I don't know, what's that, four and a half feet is how big this snake really was. It stretches a little bit as they shed. So many of you have probably seen a snake skin, okay? And on our scavenger hunt, you might find a sign that an animal left behind, this could be a really good sign that an animal left it behind. The scavenger hunt's not posted yet. We're gonna be putting it up on our uh, website. So megspointnaturecenter.org, go to the virtual learning center and you'll get the, 
archived video that we did today along with a little list of vocabulary words. And then on Fridays, we'll try and add some more educational materials on there, things for you guys to, to do. There are also on the website connections to our other DEP facilities. So you can see what's happening at Dinosaur State Park, Goodwin Conservation Center, or the Kellogg Environmental Center. And they've got activities and they're going to be putting more stuff up too. So plenty of things to keep you guys busy uh, during this, this time that you're stuck inside. Okay, so we talked about snake shedding. Do you guys shed your skin? Anybody out there shed your skin? We're going to do it right now. Everybody take your hands, put them together, and rub them as fast as you can. You have to make it hot. So rub fast and hard until it gets really hot. Rub, 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 rub. Okay, when it gets really hot, take a look. Can you see any skin that has come off? Most of the time, it's just a little dirt. <laughs> but our skin sheds in little tiny pieces. It's just like dust in the air. Every time we wash our hands, which we should be doing all the time right now, little bits of skin are coming off. Snakes shed their skin at one time, one big shed, okay? Every time we're moving around, we're shedding our skin. You can't even tell. It's just like dust. So they do shed. We do shed as well. All right. Let's do some questions. We've got some very big comments going by here. What do we have for questions? How, good question. How many times do they shed? So typically the most a snake is going to shed is about four times a year. Sometimes a younger snake, if it's growing really fast or really beating up its skin, it might shed a little bit more often, but about four times a year. Older snakes a little bit less. Why is the snake skin white? Why is the skin white after it's shed? So the pigment, the color that's in the skin is very hard to see when it's really thin. It takes layers and layers for all of that skin to show the color. But if you look closely at a shed, now this snake was a black snake, so there was no pattern. But sometimes when you find these, if you look really close, you can see a pattern. You can see a little bit of black there. So most of the pigment stays behind in the skin and the little thin layer that's shed doesn't have any pigment in it. So you don't see a lot of color to it. What other questions do we have? We have, how many babies do they have and how do you tell the boys from the girls? Very good question. Again, with most snakes, you can't tell boys from girls without doing an internal probe, which is something that usually we reserve for the vet to do. We don't do it very often here and we only do it if we really have to. So you can't really tell externally with most snakes. The babies, these snakes could have up to 50 babies at one time. Younger, smaller snakes will not have that many, but the ones that get bigger and older will. And water snakes can get to be about five feet long. So they can get pretty big for a snake. Did somebody say how big they get? I just answered that one. That's cool. How fast do they swim? That's a good question. I don't know, like miles per hour. Um, they are pretty quick. They're quick enough to catch a fish, uh, but they're really ambushing the fish. So they move nice and slow until they get near and then they'll grab it really fast. So they're not swimming as fast as a fish across a pond. If a fish is, is really trying to get away, the fish is going to be able to escape. Most of you will probably be able to swim fast enough to, to get away from the, uh, the snakes. So they're not fast swimmers, but they are good swimmers. Now let's mention there are two snakes in Connecticut that really swim to get their food. The garter snake will also swim and catch fish. The water snake gets fish. All snakes know how to swim, but those are the two that are swimming more often. It's because they're looking for food in the water. Can you show the snakes again? Yeah. I can. I was, that's why I left the top off so I could take them out. Okay, so again, this is the snake that has the color, the natural color pattern. She's getting, or it's getting ready to shed as well, so you can't see the pattern as well. After it sheds, we'll come back, and I'll just do a little short with one of our other programs, 
and show you how great the skin looks after it sheds. This snake also, I think, is a little bit hungry. She's been moving her mouth a lot. When the fluid completely clouds the eyes, they won't eat until they shed. So the other one will not eat. Now this one, the fluid hasn't clouded the eyes completely, so this one will probably eat today. Um, but then after it clouds over, it won't eat. All right, do we have any other comments? Do they eat mice? So typically these snakes are gonna stick to frogs and fish. If they get really hungry and encounter a mouse, they might eat it. Uh, they might also eat the larger insects for the smaller, the babies will eat larger insects and things like that. So they're not strictly just gonna eat fish and frogs, but those are, that's their primary food. Do we have any, we don't have any baby snakes here at the nature center right now. I also see somebody asking if, uh, where they can watch the live streams recorded or saved afterward. And if you go to megspointnaturecenter.org, our uh, virtual learning center has an archive with every video that I've done for the past couple of weeks. And it also has a list of vocabulary words next to the video, so you can log in and, and get those words, and we will be putting additional uh, educational things up on there as well. What are the predators? Great question. They don't have a lot of predators. Uh, not really any predators that are in the water. They don't have to worry about that. It's predators on the, on the shore that they have to worry about. So it's fox, raccoons, maybe an otter, uh, and then some hawks will take them. So the snake, even though it's a water snake and it goes in the water to get food, it does have to climb out and dry out. If they're wet all the time, they can get some problems with their scales. So they do have to dry out and they will dry out for a, a good chunk of the day. They're gonna spend dry, not soaking wet. So that's when they have to watch out for those predators. Any other ones here? What do we have? How fast can they move on the ground? How fast? They're pretty good on the ground. It would probably be a quick walking pace for most people is how fast uh, the snake can move on the ground. And what is the largest snake we have here? The largest snake in the nature center is actually coming up. We haven't done the show on that one yet. That's the um, Eastern rat snake. And it's actually the longest snake in North America. Um, but we'll be getting to that one. Declan, who sent us an awesome picture the other day, would like to know how the snake feels. So Declan, that sent the picture, thank you for the picture. And this snake is not as smooth as most. This snake has keeled scales, so the scales are a little bit rougher than most snakes. Most snakes feel really silky smooth. The belly is very smooth. Okay, snakes are so smooth and shiny that people think they're wet and slimy. They're actually not wet and slimy, they are dry, um, but they're very, very smooth, except for this one on its back, which is kind of a little bit rough. Okay, we're gonna put the snake back. I wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank the friends of Ham and Asset because they're uh, keeping everything up and running. Um, and like us, follow us. It's the best way for your friends and, and family and neighbors to uh, follow what we're doing and, and they might start following as well. Go to the website, megspointnaturecenter.org. You can get lots of more information. And again, put together your songs, rhymes, however you wanna do it. Put it together, send them in. I could use a lot of help creating this. And uh, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Two o'clock, we're actually gonna be outside. We're not gonna be in the Nature Center. We're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna do a little bit different program this afternoon. So make sure you tune in Facebook Live at two o'clock. Thank you everybody, I'll see you then.